Hello everyone, welcome back. The last few weeks I've been doing a study on temperature measurement. And by that I don't mean running experiments and you know evaluating sensors. I mean that in the theoretical sense, uh, where I've been looking at the tolerances and uncertainties related with to the various sensors we use uh, for 3D printing. Um, so everyone knows about thermistors, uh, they're the most common uh, temperature measurement device for 3D printers, um, but there's always been uh, RTDs like the PT100 or PT1000 out there um, that people advertise as you know, a more accurate or more, um, a better high temperature solution. And so I really wanted to understand the differences between those uh, sensors and really uh, take into effect the variance of each component in the measurement circuit um, and also the software component because that is a very real um, aspect of it as well. So today I'm going to go over uh, specifically thermistors. We're going to go through the circuit uh, that is used to measure them. Uh, we're going to look at how the uh, firmware calculates what the temperature is. Um, and then that will give us a high level understanding of um, the next video, which will be more looking at the um, tolerances of each component in that circuit um, to understand what um, kind of adds up and what the most significant factors are so that you can pick um, the best thermistor or RTD for your application. So to first understand uh, temperature measurement, we really need to understand the thermistor because again, this is the most common temperature sensor in uh, 3D printing and really in the world around us because it is so inexpensive. Um, you can buy one at volume, you know, at, for pennies, uh, and so it's really easy to, you know, quickly hook it up and, and get a temperature measurement. However, obviously a thermistor doesn't output temperature, it outputs something else, uh, resistance. Um, so it is essentially exactly what it sounds like. If you mix uh, temperature and resistor together, you get thermistor. Um, so it varies in uh, resistance as the temperature changes. Here is a resistance versus temperature curve for a common 3D printing thermistor. This one's generally found in heated beds. There's two things I want you to note here. The first one is that this is an NTC or negative temperature coefficient thermistor, which means that as the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. This is fairly common for 3D printing though there are uh, PTC or positive temperature coefficient thermistors available. The second part I want you to note is that this curve is really uh, not linear at all. So if you pick two points on this curve and draw a straight line between them um, and try to estimate the temperature versus resistance response, um, you're not going to match this curve at all. It also comes into effect later on as we're looking at um, the ADC resolution and some other things like that for accuracy, um, but that'll be touched on more in the next video. Now that we have an idea of how the resistance varies with temperature for a thermistor, we need to convert that resistance into something the microcontroller can read. Because microcontrollers only have two inputs, um, a digital input that is basically a true or false. Uh, so you either send in, say, 5 volts for true or 0 volts for false, or an analog input, so any voltage between 0 and 5 volts. And since resistance is not a voltage, we need to convert that resistance over into a voltage. And to do that, we're going to use a voltage divider. We're going to create a quick circuit here that shows basically what happens on the 3D printer control board. To start, we need a voltage source. In this case, I'm going to pick 5 volts because that's a nice round number. Also because a lot of uh, the older style Arduino Mega or Ramps controllers use 5 volts uh, for the, the supply power. Next we need two resistors. Uh, this first one is going to be called a pull-up resistor um, and that it will stay fixed the entire time. And 4.7 kilo ohms is a fairly common uh, resistance value, so we'll pick that. Next, um, this resistor is actually going to represent the thermistor itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 100 uh, kilo ohms because that is the nominal resistance uh, commonly used uh, for most thermistors, at least the ones that we use. Next, we want to know the voltage in between here. So we're going to grab a voltmeter item down here. And we're going to wire that up uh, right like that. And then we're going to connect the voltage uh, down there, like that. And then the last part we need is a ground. So what's happening here is this 5 volts. Um, we're assuming that no current is flowing through here. So this is only reading the voltage right here. 
but this 5 volts is gener generating a small current that's flowing through both of these resistors. Uh, because these resistors are different values, um, the voltage drop across one resistor is going to be different than the other, and so the voltage at this point here will vary. So this shows us at room temperature conditions, the input uh, analog voltage into the microcontroller is fairly, fairly close to the maximum 5 volts. However, if we change this to, say, 250 ohms, which is fairly close to a resistance of a typical uh, you know, thermistor that we use in 3D printing at, say, print temperatures like 200 or 250 degrees Celsius. Oh, wrong link. Um, you'll see here that this voltage has dropped to 252 millivolts, so almost zero volts. So with this plot, what I've done is I've taken the previous plot I showed uh, with the resistance versus temperature curve for that common thermistor, and I've added um, the uh, output of the circuit that we just had. So at uh, 25 degrees Celsius, so ambient conditions, um, we're pretty close to a 5 volt analog output. And then down, once we get to print temperatures, we're pretty close to 0 volt output. And so um, this is all good. Um, you can see in the center, you know, the slope here, there's a lot of change in analog voltage for a given change of temperature. And then down near the high temperatures and low temperatures, um, that slope is flatter. And this wouldn't matter if the analog input to a microcontroller was perfect. Um, however, an analog to digital conversion needs to convert the analog voltage into a number. Um, so essentially what it does is it breaks up the 5 volt to 0 volt range into a bunch of small increments. For the ramps board, um, it is a 10 bit ADC, which means that if you look at uh, 2 to the 10th power, um, that is the number of bins that this 5 to 0 volt range is divided up into, which is 1024. So if you're at this perfect uh, 2.5 volt um, line right here, essentially that would get outputted by the ADC as, as 512. However, um, what happens is, uh, let's see here, in this plot, this is a really you know exaggerated example of what's going on, but for every step, um, you're actually going to have a slight rounding error because it's going to estimate or um, approximate each range of analog voltage into a specific value. There's no increment in between 512 and 513. Um, there's just whole numbers. And so what ends up happening is that as you get closer to the ends of the range, you end up don't you end up getting less uh, precision or accuracy. Um, of your measurement because you don't have as much uh, ADC resolution there. So we're getting close. We have a temperature that is measured by our thermistor that is converted into a resistance value that is converted into an analog voltage through your voltage divider that is converted into a number such as 512 through your microcontroller's ADC. Now in order to convert that ADC value into the temperature that you see on your screen there's a few more steps that happen behind the scenes. Likely these are implemented in your printer's firmware and you've never thought about them. But what ends up happening is that ADC value gets back calculated into an estimated voltage because there's errors associated with the ADC. That gets calculated into a estimated thermistor resistance and then based on the thermistor type defined in your printer configuration that gets converted back to the estimated temperature that's displayed on your screen. Before I wrap up today, there's one more thing I'd like to touch on, and that is how we characterize thermistors. As I mentioned earlier, the resistance versus temperature curve for thermistors is very nonlinear, so we need a better way of approximating or calculating what the temperature versus resistance curve is, because the microcontroller needs a function, essentially, in order to convert that resistance back to a temperature measurement. The way we do this is using the steinhardt hart equation. There's two main approaches to using this equation. The first one is if you have a data sheet that lists out the resistances of the thermistor across the entire temperature range that the th thermistor can be used for. If you grab three pairs of resistance and temperature from across that data sheet and back calculate out the coefficients a, b, and c, you can use those coefficients with this function up here to have a very good um, representation of the thermistor response, you know, even at the extremes of the, of the thermistor. 
The second approach applies if you don't have access to all the data sheets. Sometimes all you get is essentially three data points. A temperature and resistance pair at a nominal condition, say 25 degrees Celsius and 100,000 ohms, and then a third term called beta, which is essentially the slope or the response to the resistance versus temperature. While this seems like it's okay, the downside is that beta term is generally defined across a small temperature range close to ambient conditions, say between 25 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. If you rely on this out at, say, 250 degrees Celsius for a hot end temperature, um, there's a lot of error associated with that, and it's not really a good representation. So you may need to um, you know, find a different beta value if you're interested in using it at a more extreme condition, or really um, use a different thermistor if you don't have access to the entire data sheet. And with that, we're done for today. Um, I really wanted to do that high-level overview. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Um, I, and again, we needed to lay that foundation down so that this next video, where we get to uh, more tolerances and uncertainty, um, that you had that groundwork of how it, it worked um, so you could kind of understand where the variability came from. And always, if you find this content interesting, feel free to subscribe uh, for future videos. I've also uh, started a Twitter that I wanted to do a little something more informal or, you know, sometimes I don't post a video for a few weeks. Um, but on that Twitter account, I try to post more regularly about things I'm working on, uh, maybe short videos or, or photos of, of different projects I'm working on. So if you want to stay up to date, uh, feel free to follow. Um, it's in the video description below. Have a good one.